Okay, so our first problem of the day is going to be a triple integral, okay? The function is actually going to be y minus x times z, okay? We're going to integrate along dz first, and then along dy, and then along dx, and the limits of integration are from 2 to 4, uh, negative 1 to 1, and 0 to 3, okay? So look at what we have here. We're integrating a function of three variables, x and y and z. We're integrating along three directions, and then these are just simply the limits of integration along z, the limits of integration along y, the limits of integration along x. So you're, by doing all of this, you're defining what that volume looks like. Okay, what that volume looks like. And because these limits of integration really aren't complicated, you see this looks a whole lot simpler than what we were looking at on the previous screen. Because these limits of integration are just numbers, this volume region that we're actually integrating over is just a cube. It's, it's literally just going from z to z, y to y, x to x, okay? And so you're actually just forming a little cube there. If these were more complicated functions up here, then maybe instead of going from z to z up here, you'd have some weird looking function on the bottom and some weird looking function on the top, and you would define a, a more complicated looking volume. But when you just have numbers in the, uh, in the limits of integration, you're really just integrating over simpler shapes, you know, simple little, little constant value, so it's gonna form a cube in this case, okay? So, mathematically speaking, what do we do? What I do when I write this down on my paper is I literally write uh, a curly brace like this, and I work on the inner integral first, and I get the answer, and then I do the next one, and then I do the next one, so that's how we're gonna do it here. When you're integrating along z, from here on out, by the way, nothing is different from your double integrals that we've already done in the last volume one. So if you haven't looked at that, please go look at it now. You've already gotten a lot of practice with what we're going to do here. It's just going to have an extra integral sign. So what we're doing is we're integrating along z, so that means z is what we're integrating over. Anything else, x or y, anything else is just a constant. You must get to the point where you can look at these things and say, okay, I'm integrating along z. x and y are just numbers. They're, they could be, you know, negative 10 or negative 54. I treat them exactly as a constant when I'm doing the integration. So what this is going to equal since y is a constant, the answer to this integral is y times z, okay, minus x over 2z squared. Now make sure you understand that, okay. This is a number. It's like 2, okay. So if, I integrate, if I'm integrating over a dz and this is like 2, well, this is just a constant. It comes down and then you have your, your variable. That's a simple integral from calculus 1. And if z is a constant, I'm sorry, if x is a constant, because it is, here we're integrating over z, this is a constant, it just comes out, one-half z squared. That's just a regular polynomial integral that you've been doing all of your life. You evaluate this from 2 to 4 because those are the limits of integration along z. So you see, it's, it's really not that bad. You just have to know what to hold constant. So when you do this, when you're plugging in your limits of integration, you integrate it along z. So the limits of integration must be plugged in only into the z's because that's what you integrated over. Everything else is just a constant, okay? So the way this will work out here, actually let me go ahead and write it a little bit, a little bit down below here. What you're gonna have here when you evaluate this, this uh, definite integral here is you will have y times four, okay? Minus x over two times four squared. I just plugged four into the z squared and four into the z minus and I'm going to do the same thing with the 2. It's going to be y times 2 minus x over 2, and it's going to be 2 squared. Okay? All I did was take the upper limit, plug into wherever z is, and the lower limit, plug into wherever z is, and I just simplify, and let's see what we get. Okay, so over here, uh, let's not get too crazy. Let's not try to do too many things at once, so let's just rewrite this as 4y, okay, minus... 4 times 4 is going to be 16, right? 16 divided by 2 is going to give you 8. So you're going to have 8x here, okay? Uh, you're going to have a, a, a negative sign here, but I'd rather just go ahead and do it. Let's, let's go ahead and do it this way. Negative 2y, because you have 2y here. Negative times negative gives me a positive here. And then over here, I'm going to have 2 squared is 4. 4 divided by 2 is 2, okay? So you have 2x, and it's positive because of this. Okay, so collecting all of my terms, what I have uh, here is I'm going to have negative 6x, okay, plus 2y. Negative 6x plus 2y. Now notice that when I integrated this inner function here, 
I integrated this function and I plugged in the limits of integration into the z's, okay, and I got a function of x and y back, okay. Now remember, I took great care to tell you that that would always happen, just to sort of give you the sort of a little bit of the theory behind what's going on here. You integrate along z and you plug in to values of z because that's what you integrated over, you're always going to get a function of x and y back. So when you take this function and you integrate it along dx and dy, you're just this now reduces to a double integral that you've done, you know, in the last section, in the last couple of sections, integrating a function of x and y over x and y. So now you see you've just done a, another step here and now it reduces to a problem you've already done before. Okay? So you're actually getting some extra help and and practice in doing double integrals as well. Because what we're going to do now I'm going to switch colors, is I'm going to take this, okay, and I'm now going to integrate, uh, I'm going to integrate it like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, just to make it totally clear to you, I'm going to re rewrite everything. 0 to 3, negative 1 to 1, the function is negative 6x plus 2y, and I'm integrating that dy dx. I've just taken the answer, I'm integrating along dy and dx. And I'm going to do exactly the same thing that I did before. I'm going to take and I'm going to draw a little curly brace and I'm going to evaluate that inner integral first. Now here I'm integrating along dy, so y is what I'm integrating over. Anything else is constant, including this x. So to actually do this integration, you're going to have negative 6xy, because this is a constant. So it's a number. It comes down, you have your y because that's how you integrate. Uh, simple integrals like that, you have a number, and this is just going to be a y coming, it's a polynomial integral, okay, plus I'm going to have 2 over 2y squared, because this is a 2, it's a constant, 1 half y squared, that's just a regular old plain Jane integral from calculus 1, evaluate this from negative 1 to 1, okay, evaluate it from negative 1 to 1. So what I'm going to actually have in the end here Plugging in here, I'm going to actually plug in. Uh, I'm going to actually plug in the top limit in integration into the y's and the bottom number into the y's because I've integrated along y. So when I evaluate the limits, I need to plug them into only the y's, okay? Because that's what I integrated over. So what I'll have is negative six x times y, which is one, okay? Plus two over two. I'm just going to say is one. So I'm not going to worry about it. Plugging in here is going to be one squared. I'm going to write it down just for completeness. Okay, just for completeness. And so I don't run out of space here. I'm going to subtract off. This is plugging in the top. I'm going to subtract off plugging in the bottom. I'm going to have negative 6x times negative 1 because that goes into here. Notice I kept the negative here, negative 6x times this. And then I'm going to have plus, again, 2 over 2 is 1, so I'm not going to worry about it. Plugging in negative 1 here, I'm going to have negative 1 squared. That's going to be squared. So all I need to do is evaluate what that gives me here, okay? So going up here, negative 6x times 1 is negative 6x, okay? Plus 1 squared is plus 1. I have a negative here, so negative times negative is a positive, but then I have another negative 1 here, so this is going to be negative 6x, okay? And then I have a negative distributed in over here. Negative 1 squared is positive 1, but it's times negative, so I'm going to have negative 1 here. Okay, I think you can convince yourself that that's what happened. Now the positive one and the negative one just add to zero. So all I'm going to have after all of that is done is negative 12x. Negative 12x, just adding these two things together. Okay, negative 12x. Now what do I do? Going back up to the top of the page, you can see that I've done the integral along dz. Now I've done the integral along dy. Now I need to do the integral along dx. So it's a real simple matter. Okay to take this and finish the integral. So now I'm going to integrate from 0 to 3, okay? The integrand is negative 12x dx, okay? And this is a super simple integral. It's negative 12 over 2x squared, just a, just a regular polynomial integral, evaluated from 0 to 3, okay? So negative 12 over 2 is negative 6, okay? And then on the inside, I'm going to plug in the top value, which is 3 squared minus, and then the bottom value is 0 squared. All I did is I evaluated the outside, I kept it out, and then I just evaluate the limits of integration on the inside. So what you're going to have is negative 6 times 3 times 3 is 9. Okay? And so the answer is going to be negative 54. 9 times 6 gives me 54.